Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve letter combinations of a phone number. So we're given a string of digits that contain only two through nine. So the digits are only gonna contain the numbers two through nine. And we wanna return all possible letter combinations that the number could represent. And so basically what this problem is about is like when you wanted to text people with old phones, you only had these digits, right? So in order to have characters, you'd map a, a number like two to the characters A, B, C. And you can see the reason we're doing two through nine is because one was not mapped to any digits, right? So we don't need to consider the one. Two was mapped to A, B, C three was mapped to D, E, F, basically each number or each digit, four, five, six, each one was mapped to three characters, some were mapped to four characters, seven is mapped to four, nine is mapped to four different characters. So then if you're given a string of digits, let's say two, three in this case, right? Two, three is our string. Well, how many different output strings could we have? Here you can see we have a bunch, right? We have nine different strings. Why do we have nine different strings? Because this two could be three different characters. It could be A, B, or C. This three could also be three different characters, D, E, F. So three times three is nine. So basically we can have, we can have nine different combinations of these characters, right? We could have A, D, we could have A, E, we could have A, F, right? And so on and so on, right? So we could have B, E, B, B, F, and then do the same thing for C, right? So then you'd, we'd have nine different strings. And so basically you can tell that this problem, right? Like writing out the solution like this, it's not that difficult because we're gonna basically be forced to brute force this problem. And it's a backtracking problem because we have to brute force it, right? We have to basically find every single combination that we could get using the given digits. And you might have noticed I've been doing a lot of backtracking problems recently. And that just goes to show you that backtracking is a very important algorithm. So let me just show you kind of the drawing of the backtracking solution. So luckily for us in this case, we're only given two, three, right? And so we only need to find, okay, two maps to these three characters, three maps to these three characters, but we know in total, we it's possible we could have a four, we could have a five. If we had a four, we know four maps to the next three characters after this. So G, H, I, I think, unless I'm forgetting something. And basically we could have any character, right? From two through nine. So we're gonna need to create a hash map or some kind of way to map every character from, or basically every digit from two all the way to five, six, seven, all the way to nine, right? And map them to the characters that they end up being, right? We know nine is, I think, gonna be X, Y, Z. We're basically gonna have to hard code this map of characters. There's not like a clean way to do it, mainly because some of the characters, I think seven has four characters, right? Seven is mapped to four different characters and so whatever, but this is a pretty small hash map, right? So it's not a big deal if we have to hard code it. But now let's just look at this problem itself. How are we gonna solve it? Well, so the first character is two, right? So two could map to three different characters. So two being the first digit, it can map to A, B, or C, right? And the next character we know, or the next digit is three. So from A, we could have three different characters that follow after it. We could have a D, we could have an E, or we could have an F. And that's gonna be true for every single one of these, right? We could basically put a D, E, F after each of them. And this is the entire backtracking tree. So based on this, what's our solution? Because remember, we wanna know the strings that this could map to. Well, this is one string, this is one string, this is another string. So basically for each of the leaf nodes in this tree, we're gonna follow the entire like list of characters that came before it. That's gonna be the output strings, right? A, A, D, A, E, a, F, and so on, right? B, D, B, E, B, F, and the exact same thing for C. 
So when you visualize it like this, this is actually a pretty simple problem. So now you just need to know how to write this backtracking algorithm, and I'm gonna show you how to do this recursively. But before I do that, the time complexity for this is basically the number of combinations that we're gonna have. So the question is how many different outputs could we have for a string, let's say the input string is length n, how many different outputs could we have? Well, since we know that there are some characters, like I think nine maps to four different characters, I think W, X, Y, Z actually. So the brute force is gonna be four to the power of N. That's how many outputs we could actually have, right? Because maybe we'd get a string S equal nine, 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 right? So basically we'd have four choices for each of those characters. So four times four basically four to the power of n, which is the length of the input string, right? So that's the number of output strings that we're gonna have. And the length of each output string is gonna be the same as the length of the input string, right? So really the time complexity is gonna be big O of n times four to the n. And basically this is the worst case time complexity. Okay, so now let's get into the code, which is gonna be fairly short. So the first thing we wanna do is have a result. This result is gonna contain the combination strings that we're trying to build. And the next thing we wanna do is create a map of digits, right? We wanna take every single uh, input digit that could be possible, like two, and map it to the characters that are possible. So A, B, C, right, for two. And unless you wanna see me type this out, I think I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So this is what our uh, digit map is going to be like. And you can verify this if you have an old phone laying around that this is the correct mapping from digits to the following uh, string characters. So now let's write that backtracking function. It's going to be a recursive function and I'm gonna uh, declare this function inside of this function so that we don't need to pass in these parameters every time we call this backtracking function. And we also don't need to pass the digits that we're on. I'm only gonna pass in one variable i, which is gonna tell us what index we're at in the digit string that we're given as the input to our function. And I'm actually gonna pass in one more variable. So the current string, meaning basically the current string that we're building. So let's say our input was uh, one, two, three, and the current string would contain something like A, right? So if we've, we've only visited one so far, we'd have A, and then we'd want the next two characters from two and three. So we know the base case is if I is greater than or equal to the length of digits, or actually an even better base case would be our current string, let's say the length of the current string is exactly equal to the length of digits. That means that we've basically been able to take every single digit and then map it to a character because current string is going to contain those characters. And if that is the case, then we are allowed to take our result and add to it the current string that we just built. And then since this is the base case, after that we can just return. If this is not true though, that means we haven't finished building the current string. That means we need to continue going through the digit that we're at, right, at index i. So let's create a loop to do that. So basically I'm gonna take digits of i. That's gonna tell us the current digit that we're at, right? And I wanna take this digit that we're at and I wanna map it to the list of characters that it maps to, right? So if we had nine, we know nine maps to w, x, y, z. So how can I do that? Well, that's why we created this digit to character map. We can take a digit and then map it to a character. So digit to character, I'm gonna take this digit and now basically this is going to be the that string that it maps to. And I wanna just go through every character in this string. So for every C, every single character in this string, I wanna brute force this, right? So for every single character, I'm just gonna call backtrack. I'm gonna make that recursive call, right? So for I, we're gonna increment I by one because we're moving to the next digit. And for the current string, we're gonna just take the current string that we were given and add one more character to it, the character that we're currently visiting, C. And that's actually all that we have to do. We have our single base case and we have our recursive case. You can see that the only thing that might be different for you is that our recursive call is inside of a loop. 
So with this backtracking function complete, now let's actually call this backtracking function. So we the parameters to give it are going to be zero for the index and the current string is initially just going to be empty, right? But I'm actually going to need to make one last modification. So we're only going to need to call backtracking if the digit string that we're given is non-empty. And the reason is because if digits was empty, then our recursive call would be called and then we'd execute the base case once. So then we'd end up returning this as our result. We'd add the empty string to result. But in the way this problem is defined, if digits... If digits was empty like this, if digits was just an empty string, the output that they actually want is just an empty array like this. So that's why we have to put this inside of a condition. But other than that, all we have to do is now return our result and the function is complete. So you can see that it's pretty efficient, about as efficient as you can make a problem like this, even though it's a rel it's uh, what's it called? It's an exponential function, right? But I hope that this was helpful if it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.